we may have our thoughts of what generosity means, but Lord, uh, please just open up our minds and our hearts to understand what it means truly to you. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, just a couple of weeks ago, I think about a little under a month ago, um, our church really made what generosity supposed to look like happen. So everybody pretty much knows about what happened in Western North Carolina, Asheville, when it came to the flood. A lot of people were displaced. A lot of families were affected. And our church and the volunteers, not only from our church, but all around the country pitched in and then came collectively together to help those people in need. Um, it was some staggering statistics that just our church alone was able to do. Um, amazing uh, men and women here. Um, we were able to assist 3,000 families by delivering approximately 8,000 pounds of food and dry goods and over 74,000 pounds of water. So just stop and think how important would that be for somebody to, to see that, that, that type of generosity. Oh, it's disconnected? Okay, too easy. I get it. But that's what truly generosity, guys, means. It's, it's doing more of, your, of yourself than you ever would thought possible. There we go. It's coming up here. So what we're going to be getting into today, we're going to be talking about Paul and what some of the amazing uh, acts of generosity that, that Paul did. Before we get into that, I'm quite sure everybody knows about, of course, social me media influencers. Um, who here knows about Mr. Beast? Quite sure. So when somebody says, hey, man, you know, Mr. Beast, he's known for doing over-the-top feats of generosity. Um, if anybody knows about him, he has all kind of games and prizes, getting free houses, getting uh, a new Lamborghini, um, all kinds of stuff. But what people don't know is what, what is behind all of this, though. Is it really truly generosity, or is it something that just going to be pretty much garnering likes and clicks. So a lot of things that people do, guys, they're not really genuine. One of the things about him, and, and, and I'm not going to be blasting him or nothing like that, putting him on blast, but one of the things people don't understand is he once was a Christian, and he fell away from Christianity. So on the outside, some of these things that we think are really generosity they're, they're, they're really shallow. Guys, what, what I want to really get into today is we, we, we've talked about things that take our time before. We've talked to you guys uh, and everybody, even adults, about what are some things that take our time. So we've already talked about before distractions, right? We're like, hey, oh, hey, guys, what are some things that take, you know, take your time? But guys, what we really want to hit on today is one of the big problems at Thessalonica that Paul, he, he really opened up and shared with them that was one of the main problems. Guys, when things become idols, when they take the place of God, time with him, service to him, or is in di direct disobedience to him, those things are idols. When Paul went to the city of Thessalonica, it, it was pretty much in comparison to like L.A. Pretty much they were the second largest and wealthiest cities in, in the empire. So they were known for idol worship. So if you wanted beauty, man, they had a false god Aphrodite. If you wanted well, if you wanted uh, the uh, pleasure and an abundance of wine, they had a false god Bacchus. If you wanted um, wealth, they had a false god for that. In, in Artemis, they had everything but God. And sometimes we find ourselves plugging into, hey, YouTube is a thing. I'm not going to lie. I have some, I've, I watch a video 
on YouTube. But the thing about it is being intentional. What are you watching, right? So I was doing some research. The average Gen Z spends 6.9 hours a week on YouTube. What are you feeding yourselves, right? So the same things that were a problem in Thessalonica back then, guys, there's nothing new under the sun. Everybody, since the beginning of time to now, has distractions. They have false idols. The thing that we sit here and we subscribe to, the things that we click, the things that we watch, what are we devoting th those things to? And unbeknownst to you, I have to let you know, those things are idolatry. If you can't put them down, if you can't put them down, even in the house of God, that's really a problem. And so I have to be honest with you. There's, there's people now, there's kids. Man, we're in the house of God, and we, and we still video games. If you can't put it down in the house of God, you better be worried. That right there in itself is an idol. So this is a journey of, of Paul. So Paul pretty much journeyed all across these regions here into Thessalonica. The importance of that is not only was it wealthy, not only did it have a lot of false gods, guys, but, man, Paul was getting some traction. Paul and his crew, he rode with, uh, with Silas and Timothy. They were making a major impact. But that impact was met with a lot of opposition. So if you stop and think about it, how comfortable would you feel right now if I told you that Call of Duty game you're playing, it's an idol. You need to stop it. You need to stop that and, 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 and spend your time with God. It won't feel too good, will it? Right? Well, guess what? The truth hurts. The truth requires action. So this is what Paul and his crew did. They went and they called out all these false gods that they were worshiping. The thing about it, guys, people were getting killed. Christians were getting persecuted. And when he wrote the letter to th uh, the Thessalonians, he was trying to encourage them in the face of real adversity. I'm going to tell you, being a Christian is never going to be a safe life, but it's a sacrifice life. You have to put in your mind today, what am I willing to sacrifice to get closer to God? But I want to put another little, 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 little feeler on that too. Not only what am I willing to sacrifice to give God, what am I willing to sacrifice for God's people? Because the root of it is selfishness, right? We can all agree. So I want to let you know today, guys, with a little bit of time, and we're going to get into it more in small groups. Idolatry, it all is going to stem from, from selfishness. And the things that we have to battle, guys, are pr pretty much simple as this. You're going to have flesh and spirit. Either you're going to want to spend your time more with things of flesh, which is what, guys? Death. Or you're going to want to spend your time with the things that lend to the spirit. So what we're going to do, we're going to get into the scripture. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 8. If you have your Bibles... Please feel free to turn. If you um, have notes, please take notes. That way you can take notes of the scriptures and read them on your own reconnaissance, okay? So he says, Paul, this is Paul. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know. But with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. Going back to these influencers, what are they leading you to? You have to ask yourself that. What is this whatever that is drawing our attention from God? What is it leading you to? These things that take our time, that take our attention, Guys, they're tools of the enemy, y'all. Let's just be real. So if he can sway our attention away from God, then he can lead us further and further away. On the contrary, we speak of those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God 
who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We are, we're not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else. Even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Paul's ministry wasn't, again, for clicks of views. It was doing the will of God and advancing his kingdom. It was all for Christ's sake. Before I read this next thing here, uh, scripture here, guys, here's what I want you to really understand. Well, if you ask yourself, well, how can I get to the point where I spend time learning about the Lord? How can I get rid of these strongholds, which these things really are, strongholds? I was, t I was speaking with an adult leader earlier, and great conversation. And he had told, he had asked the question, how, how were you able to overcome these strongholds, these idols? And it was said to me, it was said to him, that he didn't focus on the sin. He focused on God. He focused on the gospel. When you focus on the gospel of Christ, y'all, it is the most generous thing that God has done for mankind. I got a question to ask you guys. We've all been guilty. We've all been guilty of it. Who's been guilty here of doom scrolling for more than 20 minutes? You better get them hands raised. I know y'all telling tales. <laughs> but hey, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to give you guys something that's going to really help you out. That information that was given to that, that, that youth leader, it is applicable for every aspect of your life. When you focus on what God has done, listen, guys, over here. When you focus on the sacrifice that God has made, that Jesus being the atonement for our sins, to die for us when we didn't deserve it, to sit here and go on that cross, and not because we earned it, but because he loved us. It stems from that, that, that act of gratitude of why those men and women wanted to change. All of those false gods that, unfortunately, so many Christians that it, it knocks us off, knocks us down. Guys, you can all agree. Are they fulfilling? No. So we have to ask ourselves, why does it take so much time? Instead, we were like young children. Now, this is Paul talking to those in Thessalonica. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you because we loved you so much. Because us adults here love you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Guys, we are called to be imitators of Christ. Listen, y'all over here. Imitators. Just as he sacrificed his life, we're to sacrifice our lives for him. Here's something that it, it, was, it, was, it was said to me a couple of days ago real quick. It was said, listen, guys, very closely. It says, master your margin. So I'm like, master your margin. Here's the truth. Every last one of us gets the same 24 hours in a day, right? What you do with your margin matters. That means with that free time, I know you guys have school, multiple classes, adult leaders. We have families. We have obligations, sometimes 12-hour shifts. But how much time are we devoting to God? Can I ask you a question? How much time does God devote to us? How much? So to us, to him that is, we were worth it. We got to make sure he is. Time is your most precious gift because you only have a set amount of it. In the background of every one of these slides is an hourglass. And I remember saying this before, each and every one of us has a different one. Some can be shorter, some can be longer. It was a thought I had in my mind the other day, and I don't know why I woke up with this. 
<laughs> but it was a question. It was, it, and it said, if you only had four more years to live, what would you do? So I, I, I'm not going to lie. It was as soon as I woke up, and I'm like, oh, man. Okay, that's a great question. If you only had four more years right now, what would you do? How would you spend it? Who would you spend it for, and what would you do with it? Ephesians 5, 17, 15 through 17, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So guys, God shows immeasurable riches of love, not in material possessions or financial resources, but in the person of Jesus, a person we can have a friendship with because of God's enduring grace. To wrap this up, even though all those, the, those um, uh, YouTubers and influencers, the stuff that they give is material. What Jesus gives is eternal. Guys, we're gonna, I'm telling you, there's so many things out here we can be chasing. And those same gods that they chased in Thessalonica, they're still present here. People still chase beauty. People cho still choose to, to chase acceptance. People still choose pleasure. Guys, people still choose wealth. Guys, nothing's changed. So you have to ask yourself, as we go to small groups, what are the idols in your life? And are you ready to get rid of these strongholds? So we're going to wrap up here. Guys, um, I didn't get through all my slides, but we really want to hit these things. I'm going to share this with you, and then we're going to get ready to go. We can get our five-minute countdown. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Guys, can I ask you real quick? Does everybody agree if you work, you should get wages, right? Who agrees? All right. Well, the wages of sin is death. But if you wage a good warfare for Christ, you will have eternal life. Today, as we go in our small groups, let's identify those idols and let's get rid of them in the name of Jesus, all right? All right, let's pray out before we get going.